Hello everyone, welcome to Clavimate classes and today our topic is about the uh, molecular basis of inheritance and uh, coming to the, some of the important things about this chapter this chapter provides the knowledge regarding the RNA, DNA and its uh, replications, transcription and translation process and also the various principles in search of the I genetic material and students will be able to know brief about the genetic code and the mutations and uh, we'll also know that uh, why human genome project is considered to be the meta project and also about the DNA fingerprint. and coming to the marks weightage this uh, class 12 CBSC this unit holds around uh, 16 marks and for neat examination it holds around uh, 6 percentage and some of the topics to be covered in this chapter is that the DNA and search for the genetic material RNA, replication, transcription, genetic code, translation, regulation of gene expression, human genome project, DNA fingerprint. These are the some of the important things that you need to cover in this chapter. And first of all, each of uh, two essential roles of the ribosome during translation. So, some of the important uh, functions of ribosome is, it acts as a site where protein synthesis takes place. Okay, it is made up of two subunits. The smaller subunit comes in contact with mRNA uh, and forms a protein synthesizing complex. Okay, ribosome has two subunits. The smaller one comes in contact with the mRNA and forms a protein synthesizing complex, whereas the larger subunit acts as the amino acid binding site. Okay, and the Another function of ribosome is that it acts as a catalyst for forming the peptide bonds. Why is human genome project called a mega project? Human genome project was considered to be a mega project because it had a specific goal to sequence every base pair present in human genome. Because this is considered to be a mega project because the goal of this human genome project is that it uh, wanted to sequence uh, every base pair of the human genome. And it took around 13 years for its completion and got accomplished in the year 2006. It was a large scale process which aimed at developing new technology and also generating new information in the field of genetics. And uh, not only being uh, able to sequence all the uh, every base pair of the human genome, it also involved developing new technologies in the genomic studies. As a result of it, several new areas and avenues have opened up in the field of genetics, biotechnology, and medical sciences. It provided clues regarding the understanding of human biology. So this is the reason why the Human Genome Project is considered to be a mega project. What is DNA fingerprinting mentioned in its applications? So DNA fingerprinting is the technique which is used to identify and analyze the variations in a DNA sequence is called as DNA fingerprinting. So, in order a uh, process uh, which is used to identify and analyze the variations on the basis of the variation in polymorphism in the DNA sequence is considered to be the DNA fingerprinting. So, uh, how uh, this DNA fingerprinting is helpful is that it is used to identify the crime suspect, paternity testing, and used to find out the evolutionary history of an organism. So these are the, some of the applications where DNA fingerprinting plays a very major role. Due to reasons why both the strands, uh, strands of uh, DNA are not copied during a DNA transcription. So transcription is a process of copying information from one of the strands of DNA into RNA, right? The reason why both of the strands cannot act as a template for transcription is because of the following reasons. As we know that there are DNA is double stranded. One of the strand acts as a template for copying information into RNA. That is process known as transcription. Why both the strands cannot act as a template is because of the following reasons. Because if both the uh, strands act as a template, then what happens is that it will code for RNA molecules with different sequences, right? Leading to formation of two different polypeptide chains from the same segment of DNA. Suppose this is one segment, this is another segment, this is A and this is B. 
this both the A and B are the two strands of the DNA, right? So if uh, only A is being uh, taken as a template for uh, copying the information into RNA, then it would result that would be possible. But if both of these are act as template, then we'll be having two polypeptide chains arising from strand A and B, right? If a strand, if uh, A strand is being converted into an uh, RNA, then this will code different uh, sequence and B strand will code different sequence. But both of these are from same DNA, right? So, this would uh, result in a uh, confusion. So, it would code for RNA molecules with different sequences. So, this one will uh, result in one RNA molecule and this strand will result in another RNA molecule from the same DNA sequence. And the next one, the same segment of DNA providing two pieces of information by coding of different polypeptides would complicate the genetic information. Time. Similarly, it is a same DNA, right? Both the strands are from same DNA molecule. Then how come they, if they I mean, produce two different pieces of information, that is uh, strand A produces one uh, polypeptide chain and B produces another one that would bring, uh, bring complications. And the two RNA strands formed would be complementary to each other. And the result in these two will be complementary to each other. And this will result in a double strand RNA. Right? So double strand RNA would not be able to get translated into proteins. And thus, the entire process would be a fatal. This, uh, this is the reason why both the strands of DNA cannot be copied or used. Uh, I mean, cannot be used for copying information into RNA. Why is it essential that tRNA binds to both amino acids and mRNA codons during protein synthesis? It is essential that tRNA binds to both amino acids and mRNA codons because tRNA acts as an adapter molecule, so which picks up specifically activated amino acid from the cytoplasm. So what happens is that this tRNA acts as an adapter molecule and it will be specific. It activated uh, I mean, that only picks up certain amino acids from the cytoplasm and further it is transferred to the ribosomal where protein, proteins are synthesized. Okay, this tRNA accepts particular amino acids and then it is going to transfer that to the ribosome where proteins are synthesized. So it attracts itself to the ribosome with the sequence specified by the mRNA. Yeah. Okay, and finally transmits its amino acid to a new polypeptide chain. Okay. So TRM binds the amino acid and it transmits to the new polypeptide chain. Okay. So that will uh, be fix up the specific uh, amino acid and that amino acid uh, is transferred to the ribosome where proteins are synthesized and finally transmits its amino acid to a new polypeptide chain. So this is the process in the given figure. Okay. So this is the central dogma theory. Central dogma. Okay, here uh, DNA is being converted into RNA through transcription and uh, RNA to protein through translation. Okay, so what do you mean by semi conservative nature of DNA replication? Who proved it and how? Semi conservative replication describes the mechanism by which DNA is replicated in all the cells. Okay, it derives its name from the fact that it, this mechanism of transcription was one of the three models originally proposed for DNA replication. The one such model by Watson and Crick suggested that each strand of the double helix would serve as a template for the synthesis of the new strand. However, there was no way of knowing how the newly synthesized strands might combine with the template strands. Okay. So this is A strand and this is B. Okay, these two uh, this is A, this is B. 
so these two act as templates but however there is no way of knowing how the newly synthesized strands are attached i mean binded to these uh, template strands so that uh, they can form double helical uh, dna molecules so the semi conservative model seems most reasonable since it would allow each daughter strand to remain associated with its template strand so the semi conservative model was anticipated by uh, nikolai kolso supported by messels and stahl experiment and even more rather revealing experiments that allow for auto radiographic visualization of the distribution of old and new strands within replicated chromosomes Describe the continuous and discontinuous synthesis of DNA. Synthesis of a new strand of DNA takes place to lay the addition of fresh nucleotides to the third three OH group of the last nucleotide of the prime. This synthesis takes place in five direction enzymes that catalyze this DNA polymerase synthesis of a strand called leading strand, which is continuous. Okay, the replication of the second strand of the DNA molecule is discontinuous on a uh, strand called lagging strand. Okay, primase initiates primer synthesis on the strand near the fore. The RNA primer thus formed provides free for replication of single stranded regions on the lagging strand. The new complementary strand is formed in small fragments of DNA called Okazaki fragments. It is called discontinuous because it has to be initially initiated several times, and every time an oxygenated fragment is produced. The length of the DNA in eukaryotic cell is two point two meters. How can such huge DNA be packed in a nucleus of micrometer in diameter? As DNA is too lengthy, hence it is kept as condensed, super coiled, and wrapped around the histone optimal protein as nucleosomes. In chromosomes, supercoiling of DNA reduces the space and allows for much more DNA to be packaged inside the nucleus. So this is how the DNA can be packed in a micrometer uh, diameter of nucleus. And by the end of this chapter, uh, we will learn that nucleic acids are long polymers of nucleotides. DNA stores genetic information. RNA mostly helps in transfer and expression of information. Though DNA and RNA both function as genetic material, DNA is being chemically and structurally more stable, is a better genetic material. However, already uh, first to evolve, and DNA was derived from RNA. Uh, this makes uh, okay. The hallmark of the double-stranded helical structure of DNA is hydrogen bonding between the bases from opposite strands. The rule is that adenine pairs with thymine. And guanine with cytosine to free hydrogen bonds. And regarding the information uh, or details about admission, you can contact the given number. Thank you.